Hi students, this is Ms. Cassidy. This is our second set of vocabulary from To Kill Mockingbird by Harper Lee. Please make sure you're listening to the audio of this video presentation while you take your notes for specific instructions um, on recording the word, part of speech, the definition, and an example sentence. And as always, please feel free to pause if I'm going too fast for you. Our first word is guile. This is a noun. It means sly or cunning intelligence. The children use all their guile to get themselves out of the dangerous predicament they've gotten themselves into. Previous to now, most of their peers thought them full of guilelessness. Sly or cunning intelligence. Guile. Second word is obstreperous. This is an adjective. It means noisy and difficult to control. Can you think of an example of something that you know that is obstreperous? My example is about a puppy that is obstreperous for a teen. What's something else in your life that is obstreperous, noisy, and difficult to control? Number, oh, obstreperous. Bad dog. Obstreperous. Number three is evasion. This is a noun. The act of physically escaping from something, evasion. Um, it was perplexing how good the squirrel was at his evasion techniques from the neighborhood cats and ravens. His acrobatics were often caught on the neighborhood cameras set up to catch perpetrators, not cartwheeling and flying rodents. Evasion techniques. So in the sentence it's used as an adjective, but it can also be a noun, evasion. Evasion techniques of the squirrel. Number four is indignantly. This is an adverb. This is in a manner showing anger at something unjust or wrong. Unjust. The youngest sibling was often blamed for things the elder children did, knowing that the parents would hardly issue her a consequence due to her young age. However, she indignantly replied to her parents that afternoon that she was tired of being blamed for her older sibling's careless antics and was going on strike to being their sibling indignantly being upset with something that is unjust indignant number five is garish this is a noun it means tastelessly showy the outfits at halloween are often garish but people will smile wear that same outfit any other day of the year and people will stare snicker and post photos to social media with clever and cruel hashtags this is a noun, but in the sentence is used in, as an adjective, garish, garish. Lady Gaga can often dress garishly, often on purpose. Number six is innate. This is an adjective, an ability present at birth, but not necessarily hereditary, not necessarily something that you have to get from a parent. Can you think of something that you are innately talented at? What is something that you've just always been good at? It doesn't have to be something you're better at than somebody else, but something that you don't have to work hard to do. Innate. Innate. I have an innate ability um, to read easily, so something I've always been able to do. What is something that you can do that is innate to you? Innate to have from birth. Not doesn't have to be hereditary. Number seven is enamored. This is a verb. It's marked by foolish or unreasonable fondness, like love. It was the first time this Romeo set eyes on this Juliet, but they were immediately enamored with each other regardless. Enamored. Unreasonable fondness. Enamored. Number eight is tactful. This is an adjective, having a sense of what is considerate in dealing with others. Tactful. She knew her friend's heart was broken from the breakup, but that was several months ago. In as tactful a way as possible, she suggested it was time for her friend to move on and be happy again. Can you think of a sentence using the word tactful different from mine? What's something that you can do tactful? If you're on an airplane and somebody is sitting in your seat, how can you tactfully ask them to move? Tactful. Create your own sentence, please, for number eight. Tactful. Kermit the Frog on his means always says, but that's none of my business. Quite tactful. Number nine is formidable. This is an adjective. Extremely impressive in strength 
or excellence. Everyone knows that Circle One, Houston Astros or Los Angeles Dodgers is a formidable team and will certainly be winning the 2017 World Series Championship. The other team better beg for mercy. Formidable. Formidable team. Myopic is number 10, and this is an adjective. It's lacking foresight or scope, being short-sighted. So it can actually mean like, um, like near-sighted, you need to wear glasses, but it also means in the idea that you don't think ahead. So our sentence here is, he is so myopic, he can't see how this decision will affect him in the future. He can only think about what happens right now. It's maddening, declared his concerned and frustrated sister. Myopic, only able to see what's going on right now. Myopic, short-sighted. Eleven is elusive. This is a noun or an adjective, skillful at evading capture. The entire house was surrounded, but she was so elusive, the cat escaped out the back door without anyone to notice. Elusive. Running away without notice. Elusive. Number twelve is pensive. Pensive. Adjective, deeply or seriously thoughtful. Because she was often caught lost in her own thoughts, many considered her the most pensive student. Pensive. Sitting and thinking, lost in thought, pensive. Thirteen is fortitude. This is a noun. Strength in mind that enables one to endure adversity. Strength of mind that enables one to endure adversity. Without strength and fortitude, we won't make it to the summit of Mount Juno, declared the trip leader as the hiking group started up Perseverance Trail. Fortitude. Strength of mind. Number 14 is elucidate. This is a verb to make clear or explain. Uh, would you care to elucidate for me how this exact same essay was submitted from both of you as the school principal? Elucidate. To make clear or explain. And finally, number 15 is reminiscent. This is an adjective, tending to remind one of something, reminiscent. Can you think of something that you like to reminisce about? Something maybe from your childhood, something from middle school, something that you like to stop and think about, something that happened previously. Reminiscent. And these are our part two vocabulary words.